evolution. That's where an animal changes to a different kind of animal. Do you know nobody has ever seen a dog produce a non-dog? Never. You may get a big dog or a little dog, but you're going to get a dog every time. And it could be that the dog, the wolf, and the coyote had a common ancestor. I wouldn't argue about that. They probably did. But every five-year-old kid knows they're the same kind of animal. I'll show you. Is anybody in here five or six? Who's five or six years old? Anybody? How about... We got one? Okay. How old are you, buddy? Six? I want you to take a test. Here we have a dog, a wolf, a coyote, and a banana. Which one is different than the rest of them? The banana. Give him a hand. All right. Very good. Okay. We have college professors can't figure that out. Okay. Tell you what I want you to do. When we're done, I want you to go out to the table out in the hallway, and you can pick out any free video or DVD you want. Okay? We've got a bunch of videos and DVDs about dinosaurs and stuff out there. The Bible says the animals are going to bring forth after their kind. Now, Charlie Darwin wrote a book on the table down here called Origin of Species. See, a dog and a wolf are the same kind of animal, but they're different species. He fooled everybody by changing the word from kind to species. We'll get into more of that on video four. Lastly, we have what is called microevolution. This is changes within the kinds. Now, that one happens. I'll go along with number six. I think animals can produce a whole variety of offspring. You know, long hair, short hair, long-legged, short-legged. That happens. But the first five are purely religious. That's not science. We never observe any of those. So if you want to win the debate on evolution, simply define exactly what you're talking about. And you'll find all they ever give are examples of number six, which there's no argument about it. It happens. But then they imply that that is somehow magically evidence for the other five, and it is not. The teachers are taught, though, be sure to stress to the students that the earth is billions of years old. Make sure the kids believe this. Now, I happen to be a little old-fashioned. I think in science class we should be teaching science. Things we can observe and study and test and demonstrate. Things like the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics tells us matter cannot be created or destroyed. Well, everything's made out of matter, so if matter cannot be created or destroyed, then how did the world get here? We're here, you know. So that leaves only two choices. Somebody made the world, or the world made itself. There's no other choice. Well, there are a few out there on the lunatic fringe who will tell you, we're not really here at all, we just think we're here. Okay, you can forget about those folks, right? We're here. So either somebody made the world like the Bible says, God created it, or the world just made itself like the humanists believe. It just is self-existing and not created. Well, if the world just made itself, how could this happen? Boy, the devil thought about that for a long time. And finally, one day, he came up with the Big Bang Theory. How many of you have ever heard of the Big Bang Theory before? I was on the airplane years ago, flying from Dallas to San Francisco, and I happened to sit right next to a professor from Berkeley, UCAL Berkeley. I don't know if you folks in Knoxville have ever heard of Berkeley or not, but Berkeley is not a Bible college. <laughs> so here I was on the airplane about that far away from this guy, and we started talking about creation and evolution. Everybody I sit by on the airplane wants to talk about that, so I talk about it with him. And he said he believed in evolution. I said, yes, sir, I figured that. You have to to teach at Berkeley. I said, tell me, sir, if you believe in evolution, how did the world get here? He said, oh, it came from the Big Bang. I said, really? I'd like to hear about this. He said, you're a science teacher and you have never heard of the Big Bang? I said, oh, yes, sir, I've heard a lot about the Big Bang. And I believe in the Big Bang, but my Big Bang is a lot different than yours. I said, you tell me about your Big Bang, and then I'll tell you about my Big Bang. And so the professor took off on one of those answers that looked like it came straight from the textbook. He said, well, <clears throat> Mr. Hoven, I believe about 18 or 20 billion years ago. That's a long time. All the matter in the universe. That's a lot of stuff. By the way, the word universe comes from two Latin words, uni, which means single, and verse, which means a spoken sentence. Did you know we live in a single spoken sentence? God said, let there be. Now that'll preach, man. There's a sermon in there someplace right there, okay? And if your pastor can't find it, he ain't got no preaching him at all, okay? All the matter in the universe was concentrated into one very dense, very hot region that may have been much smaller than a period on this page. 
Say what? Everything in the universe squished into a dot smaller than a period on a page? Wow. That's one crowded dot. And heavy, too. <laughs> hey, and it ain't the first time it happened, boys and girls. This textbook says, Someday, after many billions of years, all the matter and energy will once again be packed into a small area, no larger than the period at the end of this sentence. Then, another big bang will occur. It happens every 80 to 100 billion years. Can you believe they cut down a tree to print that? Where's Al Gore when you need him? Hmm, that's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> and why did you guys send Al Gore to Washington? You had him here, you know. But no. This textbook author was brilliant. I could not believe how smart this guy was. He said, Boys and girls, nothing really means nothing. You have to be at least that smart to write a book. He said, not only matter and energy would disappear, but also space and time. However, physicists theorized that from the state of nothingness, the universe began in a gigantic explosion. What? Yes, boys and girls, you see, one day nothing exploded. And here we are. <laughs> we could spend three days talking about the Big Bang Theory. They used to say the thing that exploded was a few light years in diameter. Then they said, oh no, it's only 275 million miles. And they said, oh no, it's only 71 million miles. They keep getting it smaller. And now they're saying nothing exploded. Wow, Discover Magazine here a couple years ago said, where did everything come from? Boys and girls, the universe burst into something from absolutely nothing. Zero, nada. As it got bigger, it became filled with even more stuff that came from absolutely nowhere. How is that possible? Ask Alan Guth. His theory will explain everything. Wow, I've got to meet this Alan Guth guy. Alan Guth said in Scientific American, the observable universe could have evolved from an infinitesimal region. In Hebrew, that's a dot. He said, it's then tempting to go one step further and speculate that the entire universe evolved from literally nothing. You see, boys and girls, we all came from a dot, and the dot came from nothing. <laughs> and they call that science and put it in a science journal? I think I'd call that a fairy tale and put it in the garbage. I said, Professor, uh, what happened to your dot? He said, well, over 20 billion years ago, all the dirt in the solar system was drawn into this little bitty tiny dot, and it was spinning. It spun faster and faster, and all of a sudden, shh, boom, it exploded, big bang. And the pieces that flew off became galaxies and sun, moon, stars, and here we are, you know, people, nothing but stardust. I said, sir, can I ask you a couple of questions, please? He said, sure. What do you want to know? You know, we got a three-hour flight sitting that far away from each other on the airplane. And I said, well, sir, I got a question. Uh, you said 20 billion years ago all the dirt got together for the big squish and the big spin and the big bang. Where did all the dirt come from? You know, who made matter? He said, we don't know that for sure. I said, okay, now, sir, hold it. If I told you that I believe about 6,000 years ago God created the heaven and the earth, then you're going to say, and where did God come from? And I have no idea. But you said 20 billion years ago there was a big bang, and you don't know where the dirt came from. So basically, I believe in the beginning God, and you believe in the beginning dirt. <laughs> don't tell me my theory is religious and your theory is scientific. <laughs> no, 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 they're both religious. The news media tries to make it look like it is science versus religion. No, it's not. It's not science versus religion. This is two religions. Evolution and creation are both religious. You have to believe in one or the other. The difference is the evolution religion is tax-supported. That's the difference. One of many differences. By the way, these two timelines, it's the same thing right here behind me. On the top timeline, every inch represents 150 years. Abe Lincoln was not even president one inch ago. Okay. If I was to show you what 20 billion years looks like at the same scale as the top chart, I'd have to have a, this chart on the bottom to be this scale. This one would have to be 2,100 miles long. That's from Pensacola to Portland, Oregon. I don't want to carry a chart that big, so I made a new scale for the other one. Okay. The professor said he did not know where the matter came from. I said, well, sir, could you tell me where the laws came from? This universe is run by laws. You know, gravity, centrifugal force, inertia, Boyle's law, Cole's law. You can eat that with potato salad. Okay. There's all kinds of laws in the universe. Where did the laws come from? And by the way, why aren't the laws still evolving? Hmm? Do you ever think about that? I mean, why is gravity always the same? Why don't you weigh 10 pounds more one day? 
You say, well, I do. Well, that's for different reasons, okay? But uh, where did the energy come from anyway, huh? Who bought the gas to run this machine? He said, the professor said, I don't know any, we don't know any of those things. I said, sir, could I ask you another question? He said, sure. What else would you like to know? Else? What do you mean else? You haven't told me nothing yet. I said, sir, does Berkeley uh, have a merry-go-round? How many of you know what a merry-go-round is? You go round, round, round to your puke. You've been on them before? 